So middlewares have two important properties. One, they are reusable, and two, they can be chained. Reusability basically means that middlewares are usually stateless functions that can be used for multiple handlers. So you define them at once and then can be called when you're using multiple different handlers. They can be chained in the sense that you can call one middleware after another as many times as you want. And this creates a chain of middleware compounding their effects. Not only that, their order can be changed for different requests, which gives interesting results. In this video, let's take a look at both of these concepts in a bit of detail. Okay, now, so let's introduce a new middleware. Let's call this count middleware. And it has the same format. So we're going to do some copy pasting here up to that point. And that looks pretty good. So count middleware basically is a middleware that counts the number of requests that is sent to the server. And for that, what we can do is to define a global variable that holds the request count. And we can call it, let's say, because it can't be zero, less than zero, let's make it a uint. And you can do it like this, where you say request count holds the number of requests. And of course, this will be reset when you stop the program because you're storing this in memory. So now we can actually edit this function here. So instead of logging the request, we can still return or log the, the request count. And it also includes the current count and percentage D because it's a number. And then we can do request count. So now we can just increment request count here and that should technically work. But this is actually not correct because the this function is not safe for concurrent use. So one way to do this is to introduce a mutex. So we can do something like request count mu from the sync package and the sync dot mutex type. And then you can lock and unlock the mutex. But a more efficient and a faster way is to just use the atomic package. So we can use request count as a sync sorry, an atomic dot u int 64. So this combines those two to give you a atomically updatable variable. And so you can't directly do that. So you call add and let's say add one. And in order to load the value from request count, what you have to do is do the load function. And so now this is atomic and the value will be updated without any issues with concurrency. And now what we can do here is to write a short comment saying that this function is safe for concurrent use. And now we can use the power of middleware chaining to use this middleware as part of our request. To do that, instead of using handle root in the log middleware argument, use count middleware. And the argument to count middleware is going to be your final handler. So in the first case, that was handle root. In the second case, it is handle users. So here, as you can see, it's a chain of middlewares that terminates with the final handler. So now let's test this and see how this runs. And if you call the users path, you will see that the current count is one, so that runs. And if you run the other index, you see that the count is two, and you can keep doing this. And this gives you a really nice logging of the receive request, the URI, and then the count the request and the count. So it is in that particular order. So just to really drill down the concept a little bit, let's introduce a third middleware. So I'm going to make a full copy of this and I'm going to call this trace middleware. And trace middleware basically calculates the amount of time it took for the request to complete. And this concurrency is not important here. Uh, what we can do right now here is to introduce a start time. So we're going to take a variable that holds the start time, the time with the request started. It's time dot now. And then we're going to subtract that from when the time request is completed. So let me first use a defer function. So I'm going to use a deferred function, and you will see very soon why this is, to defer the calculation. And the input of that is going to be the start time. So when the function returns from the handler, which also we will see very soon, we are going to print the difference between the start and the end time. So it returns from handling the request, actually. You print the difference between the time when it returned and the time that it started. So in order to do that, we can just do something like this. Copy that line here and the request uh, time. 
And here what we can do, you can also call this duration, but I'm just gonna call it time and change this to percentage S, comma S. So I'm, I'm gonna print both the request and the time. And so for that, we can also remove this one here. And what we do here is remove this and instead for the first argument, we're gonna use the request.uri, so request.request URI rather. And the second argument is going to be the time right now, when you came back from the function and subtract that from the start time. So it's actually quite simple. What we're doing here is just we are printing the URI and the time. And what happens here, because it's a deferred function, this function is only called after next returns. So the start time is right now. The function comes back from next and then we print it there. So the next in this case is either handle root or handle users. So when we come back from that, we take the time that it took to finish those functions and subtract it with the start time. So if you run that now, what you get is the start time. It looks like there's a mistake here, I see. So I've not used the trace middleware. So we're gonna chain this in the exact same way we did before. I trace middleware and the argument to that is going to be the final handler, so handle root. Again, trace middleware and the final value is going to be this. So this actually looks uh, pretty good. We have three different middlewares which are chained, which ends in the final handler. If I run this now, you see that the time is like two microseconds. So now what I'm going to do is just to add a delay here in the users, handle users path, let's say two seconds, just to illustrate the difference. And for this, we can rerun this function now. Let's say go run main.go and call the slash path. Okay, that looks good. Seven microseconds and user should be in seconds. There seems to be a mistake in the code somewhere. I see it's giving me the same value. Let me see where the problem is because the handle user should be in seconds and not in microseconds. I think I made a mistake here. Ah, I see, I've reused the user. So I'm gonna set handle users here, fix that. And for the root route, it's in a few microseconds. And for the users, as you can see, it takes one, two seconds, two point some seconds. So this is just to show you how tracing works. Normally a request doesn't take that long, but that's just an example. So the way we did the middleware chaining right here is a little bit ugly because if you had 10 middlewares, then you have to keep doing this and that's a bit difficult to read. So we're gonna make this a bit more efficient. I'm gonna create a new folder called middleware. And within that, I'm gonna create a new file called middleware, middleware.go and have a package middleware. And I can actually move this handle func type to the middleware package right here. And now I have to fix all the re references so I can just say middleware dot handle func. Uh, in every place it's called handle func. So let's quickly fix that middleware dot handle func. And I'm just gonna copy this and quickly replace that in the entire code base there. And there are two more instances there and the final one is here. Okay, so that is nice. And now what we can do is to define how we handle this middleware. I'm gonna next define middleware as a special type. You will see why pretty soon. So it's a special type that probably, how could I define this? That handles handle funks maybe. Handle func. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is to define a type called middleware and it's a function of handle funks. So it takes a handle func and returns a handle func. This is a bit contorted, but you will very soon see why we're doing this. And now I can define a handle function which handles the middlewares. And this function has two arguments. So it does something like this. So it executes the middlewares first in the order in which you provide them. So we have to maintain the order and that's important. And then it finishes with calling the final handler. So handle root or handle users. So you could say calling the, how would I name this? Final handler. I think that's pretty good. And so what we can do now is to define this function called handle. It has two arguments or a bunch of arguments. The first one is the final handler. The second would be a variadic argument of a number of middlewares. 
So we can do this dot 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 middleware. So you can have one or many middlewares here. And what we can do here is first do some checks. So if the final middleware is nil, we can do a bunch of things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to panic because we should not have uh, this particular case. Oh, I forgot one thing. We need to also use the handle func. So we're going to panic because the final middleware is required in our implementation. What you can also do instead, just return a default middleware that you can, or default function that you can define here. So now the next part gets a little bit tricky. So let's take a look here. So what we're going to do is do to execute the middleware in the same order as it returned. And we return the final func. So in order to do this, this is a bit tricky. So once you understand at the end, you will know what's going on, but please bear with me as we go through this construct. And what we're going to do here is do something like for i equals len of middlewares. So we are going to start from the outermost middleware and then walk through inwards. And the reason why we do that is as follows. So using this construct, what we are going to do is final equals middleware of i of final. This is quite tricky, but what we are actually trying to do is something like this. So we're going to take the first middleware and then put it in the second middleware and then put it in the third middleware and so on, and then call the final function at the end. So that construction, when you use a loop, looks something like this. So we are going to start from the outermost to the inner because we want to execute them in the right order because you're doing this wrapping. This is a bit confusing, but this is how it is. We are chaining inwards, so we need to start from the outside. And that's how you get this particular construct where you wrap the middleware, put together and return the final function. So the middleware will always be called in the right order. So now let's replace this handling here to do something like middleware.handle. The first would be the final, which would be handle root. And then we can call the middlewares in the order in which we want to run them. So the first one is going to be the log middleware and then the count middleware followed by the trace middleware. And for the next one, I'm going to do the same thing. Handle users would be the final function, but I'm going to play around with the order a little bit. So I'll call the count middleware first and then the log and then the trace. So as you can see, this is a much cleaner way of writing functions rather than writing a bunch of chaining functions. So now let's run this and that all looks perfectly fine. Go run main.go. I see that I have a an issue here. Where could be the problem? I, oh yeah, of course, we need to loop back in and not out. So this is not I++, it's I minus minus because we're starting from the outermost and walking downwards. So that's a silly mistake, which can be fixed. And if we run it now, as you can see, let's run HTTP the index route. You will see that you have the log middleware first, then the count middleware, and then the trace. Oh, I mistakenly copied things. And if you now run the users path, it's the reverse. So you have the count middleware, the log middleware, and then the trace middleware. So you control the chaining of the middlewares based on the request. And in the first type, as you can see, it's log count trace. And in the second one, it's count log trace. Thank you.